Okay, so picking up where we left off in part 5a, I want to get the uh, theatre markings on, which are the yellow band on the tail here. I've already masked that off. And also the underside uh, of the wingtips uh, are in yellow. Some aircraft in Russia, which this aircraft uh, is, the Hartman version, uh, sometimes had a yellow lower cowling, but it doesn't appear that this particular aircraft did. Uh, and it's hard to tell really from the one or two photographs that I've managed to find uh, of the uh, G14 uh, whether or not it did have a lower cowling in yellow. So I'm going to go with Zukimura and leave it off. So you can see here, this is what I'm trying to do uh, first of all, this band here and the yellow wing tips, which actually extend quite a way into the wing. And then later on in the video, we'll start to do the national markings using the Montex uh, insignia masks. So uh, we'll mix some RLM04 up, that's the yellow colour. Uh, and we'll do that tail band first of all. Okay, so we'll get the yellow on, it's all mixed up. So uh, what I like to do, masking areas like this up, I use ordinary food wrap or cling film, we call it in the UK. And there's a couple of benefits to that. The first of all, uh, it's very flexible, so you can mould it around that tail surface. Uh, and secondly, it cuts down a lot on masking tape, which is a lot more expensive than food wrap. So it, uh, it's... A technique that I use quite a bit and I'll use it again when we come to do the wing tips so let's get the yellow on now one thing that I maybe should have done here is to undercoat this with some white yellow is a very translucent color uh, but these pigments in the uh, Mr. Hobby colour, which is what this is, Mr. Hobby acrylic, the pigment's quite uh, dense, so I don't think I should have too much trouble covering this uh, dark grey at the back. And the knack, as usual, with... Uh, applying paint is to apply it thinly and in several coats rather than trying to get it covered in one. You know sometimes there are those little voices telling you to do things in a certain way and sometimes it's as well to listen to them so I am going to put a bit of white on this. It'll help the yellow go on later on. So just cancel out that very dark grey because the contrast between the grey and the pale blue underneath uh, means it's difficult to cover the yellow evenly. Okay, so we can try again. Okay, so uh, see what we've got with the masking. Get that off. I hope it's alright because it'll be fairly difficult to uh, match the camouflage up again if I have to do any touch-ups.
Okay, so that's uh, all right. We'll do the wing tips next. Here, I'm just going to put the slats on because the yellow extends onto the underside of the slat. So I want that to uh, be properly aligned. Okay, so that's the uh, yellow theatre markings applied. Uh, I'll leave that to dry thoroughly. This Mr. Hobby acrylic paint does take a little while to thoroughly harden. Probably uh, 24, 36 hours, something like that. So it's touch dry at the moment, but I'll leave it for that time. Certainly before I apply any uh, gloss coat to this. But we've got a way to go before that happens the next thing to do is to apply the uh, national insignia using these masks I've already done the upper crosses on the wings sorry about the voice today I've got a bit of a cold and uh, the audio won't be very pleasant to listen to I don't think today but uh, I'm gonna press on anyway next I'll do the underwing crosses and these are the hardest ones to do because they've got the thin black bands around them. So the thing to work out with these Montex masks is which order to do the painting. But I'm just going to locate the basic shape of the cross first of all into the correct position on the underside of the wing. Okay, so uh, the trick with these is to get them obviously positioned equally both sides of the aircraft. And for that it's uh, easy enough to use some visual clues such as these access hatches and the panel line, just to give you some reference. So those are the basic crosses on. The order that I'm going to use is to paint this whole area white. Then I'll use the Montex masks to fill in the white areas and overspray that with some black but before applying any paint I just want to uh, extend the mast off area with some tape I don't want any overspray onto the rest of the wing so the first thing to do is to get the white on this is just Tammy and matte white I've thinned the paint about 60% thinners uh, because I want to apply this in some nice light coats to build the colour up. I don't want a step around the outside of the mask so a few thin coats are better than a uh, few thicker coats.
whilst I've got the white in the airbrush I'll also do the fuselage uh, crosses or the base for them anyway. So uh, now that the white's dry I can mask off for the black and for the underside uh, crosses We just need the white bars. Okay, we'll get the black on now and for this I'm going to be using some Tamiya rubber black and this is actually a lacquer version of Tamiya's rubber black. An extra precaution for me when using these masks is just to make sure that the junction between this bar mask and the outside of the mask is fully closed off. So in other words, this line here, because it's very easy to not butt the bar mask right the way up to the edge. And what happens is when you put the black on, you'll get a very fine black line around the outside. So although it's a bit painstaking, it does save a lot of touch up later on if you just put those little tabs of masking tape on. Okay, with the black on, we'll see how uh, the masking's done. Okay, uh, they're not too bad. I've uh, just got a little bit of the black missing here, so I'll just have to go back and uh, do that again. Got the fuselage crosses masked up again with our little insurance policies, these little bits of tape. And the centre of these crosses uh, are called out in the Zukimara instructions as being in the RLM 74, the dark grey green colour rather than black. So, uh, so that's what I've got in the airbrush. So uh, we'll get these painted. So I'm guessing that these were oversprayed, these fuselage crosses, because I'm pretty sure they would have come out of the factory in black and probably repainted in the field.
let's get this masking off see how we've done with these crosses Okay, so uh, I'm happy with the way that the masks have turned out. I've just done one or two little touch-ups of these. Uh, just where I've uh, slightly misplaced some of the templates. But I've patched those up now and they're okay. I've put the aircraft number on. I've just got to put the band on the back here, or the bar. Uh, but I don't want to mask this yellow up yet. I'm still worried that it's a bit too soft. The yellow Mr. Hobby takes quite a while to dry. So I'm not going to risk it. I'll put that bar on later on. But uh, generally they've gone okay. The underside crosses are well worth painting on. Because there's uh, hatches, rivets and panel lines that uh, a decal would have to deal with. And obviously uh, paint makes sure that we preserve all that detail. So uh, that's all good. The next thing for this is uh, the whole model will get a coat of uh, gloss varnish. And I'll be using uh, Mr Hobby uh, GX. That uh, gives a really nice smooth finish. And I, I'll apply that with some uh, lacquer thinners. So uh, this... Mr. Hobby paints already a semi-gloss as you can see but a coat of Mr. GX will just help it along a little bit for the stencils and the couple of other decals that need to be fitted. The uh, last thing that I'm uh, able to do in this session is seal all this paintwork in now with a coat of gloss. So for the gloss coat I'm using this which is Mr. Colour GX, GX100. It's super clear three and the thing with it if you've never used it before is to understand how thick it is so it's like a syrup really it's very very thick indeed and it needs to be thinned in my experience with a 0.4 millimeter uh, airbrush nozzle it needs to be thinned at least 70 maybe 80 percent uh, of thinners and what I do is mix a batch at a time. You can see the difference there. So I think the mixture is around about 70%. I'd never measure. It's just um, done by eye. But obviously that's clearly a lot thinner than the uh, neat varnish. So we'll get that in the airbrush. And we'll apply some light coats to the model.
Okay, so that's the airframe all painted up and varnished ready for the uh, stencils to go on and the last few decals. The main ones of those are the tulips that go on the nose. Uh, they uh, are provided in the Zukimura kit uh, as two sections. So we get a section that uh, fits around the nose ring uh, and the corresponding sections that go back onto the fuselage, uh, onto the cowlings there. So uh, they should look quite striking once they're fitted. Just one little thing that uh, I had to do on this was that I got one or two spits of varnish uh, onto the paint surface. And the temptation when that happens is to sand it down. But actually what that can do is leave a little pale spot in the surface of the paint. Uh, so what I've done to eliminate those spits is to just give the uh, paint surface a coat of neat lacquer thinners, Mr Hobby lacquer thinners. And what that does is it just uh, knocks the spit down and levels it out into the rest of the paint surface rather than rubbing it down. So if you ever get that problem, try that uh, method and hopefully it will work for you. So I'm going to leave that to dry now for two or three days uh, to allow the varnish to fully harden before I start to use any uh, decal setting solutions on it. And uh, we'll pick that up next time. Okay, so I'm going to leave it there for the moment. Let this varnish dry completely. Uh, before I start to do any work with the decals. Uh, and that's really because I don't want any setting solutions to eat into the surface. It has to be absolutely dry. And this uh, Mr Hobby paint does take a little while. It's not as quick drying as uh, Tamiya acrylics, for example. So uh, we're better safe than sorry. And I've got other things that I can be uh, doing. So uh, last week or the week before it might have been, I started the F35 uh, the Tamiya kit, the new Tamiya 148 scale kit. Uh, and as you can see, I'm doing a little bit more work on that, ready for episode two of that playlist. So one of those two builds coming up uh, in the next few days. Uh, but uh, in the meantime, everybody look after yourselves, stay safe, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.